Okay, we're going to be painting Billy Joel's old house in Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, it's a beautiful, looks like a Tudor um, mansion. Uh, this is the palette. Uh, I will also have a link below or I will send these individually. Okay, we're going to start with the sky. Um, I do not work wet into wet here. Um, I basically start with uh, working directly. Uh, the paints I'm using now are a combination of cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. Um, I am going to get the top of the sky a little darker than the bottom um, just to show the gradient between um, the top of the sky which is usually a little uh, darker than the bottom near the horizon. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm also taking the sky color and working in I'm establishing the shadow patterns on the house. Um, I feel that it helps uh, establish the shadows, um, gives me a starting point. Plus, it is a tint, so um, every color that I put on over that blue um, will be tinted by the blue in some way. Um, that's a quite light tint, but it will be um, enough to alter the colors, the preceding colors a bit. Now I'm washing in the, uh, the structure in the front, the rocks, the sand. Um, there's some trees around. I'm adding a little bit more of the, that cerulean cobalt blue mixture. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a, a second camera to show what I'm dipping into, but I'll try to uh, enumerate it um, vocally. Uh, Okay, so here, same thing. I just added a little bit more, a uh, little burnt umber to the ultramarine blue and cobalt uh, mix. This is uh, burnt sienna that I'm adding just to give the colors a little life. What I'm trying to do here is if we refer back to the pictures, which you guys should have, um, you what will happen is you will see that um, there will be, um, you know, local colors in, in the rocks. Um, the green is obviously from the moss, so I'm going to try to keep that, um, that going um, by patting out uh, some of those areas. If it goes down a little too dark, you can take your paper towel and just lift it up. Um, you saw just now I, I used the blow dryer to blow dry my area. Now what I'm doing in the background, I'm creating these trees um, I put a little water down first and then I sprayed it, um, the area, with some more water, okay? Now the reason for this is, as you can see, I am working wet into wet. Um, this color mixture is a bit of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, and you'll see that there's like a myriad of colors and I'll be interspersing warms with cools and you can see that um, as I go. Now what happens is as soon as I drop... Um, make those little droplets. I am loading my brush with um, a lot of uh, a lot of pigment. Um, that strange looking cloud that I just wiped off there is uh, just a little uh, a bulge in the paper. Uh, unfortunately, I can't move my painting around. I have to keep it in a fixed position. Um, I'm establishing the background trees. Um, just to get a good feeling of the background. In, in landscape, uh, I traditionally, I think most people do, we start with the sky first, the background, and then we work our way to the foreground. Here I'm introducing a little permanent green into the uh, background uh, where the trees are. It's an early spring day, so there's like little greenish fresh blossoms and things uh, in the trees uh, appearing. Um, here, so just some more uh, cool colors. It's probably burnt sienna. Um, I don't use a lot of different colors, even though the palette says I have the quinacrid and gold. I use that sparingly. Um, it's very intense. Um, okay, adding a little cerulean blue to that background just to send that area back a bit. Um, you know, blue has a tendency to recede colors and forms in the distance um, reds usually project okay 
So here, back with the blow dryer, um, drying everything up. Uh, for all you new students, you probably um, wonder why that got a little lighter. Well, that's the characteristic of watercolor. Unfortunately, um, it does have a tendency of getting about 25 to 30 percent lighter. Okay, so you see I use the back of my hand to feel um, the paper. Um, I am starting to actually work on the house. Now, I'll probably be on this for quite a while. Um, this is a 20, almost a 25-minute video. Um, but uh, you'll be able to see this before class if you like and you can you can follow it or at least do the drawing um, I'll be sending you guys the pictures so you'll have it uh, for class and I'm working on the door frame um, this will all make sense because you'll have the picture right next to you um, uh, you could print it out or keep it on a separate uh, file or maybe another computer or mobile device um, so you can reference the photograph and look at the video at the same time. All right, so I'm adding in uh, just some more local color, working on the roof, working my way down. It looked like the, the roofing was um, sort of like a, a, a grayish green tile. Um, it was really pretty. It's a brick building uh, with some Tudor elements to it on the peak. Uh, and um, so what I'm doing, I, I put the color down and then I blot it. I don't, I don't want the light side to get too dark. Um, if I do that, I'll ruin the whole light effect. So I have to foresee, um, because in watercolor, we work from uh, light to too dark. So I can't go back and lighten it legitimately. I could use some opaque color. Uh, there are a lot of schools of thought on that where um, people feel that, uh, well, I guess the, the people in the know, some of the watercolor purists feel that we should just keep our paints transparent, which we should. But uh, when we can't or there are situations where you just need that little bit of light, um, in, the, in the end of this video, you'll see that I'll be using some white to accent some of the windows that are lost in the shadows that I just couldn't paint around um, or probably just in the heat of the moment as I'm painting I forgot to mask them or forgot to paint around them so now I'm working on the shadow shapes of the building um, this is a mixture of um, <clears throat> burnt sienna ultramarine blue burnt umber to get it a little darker you'll see that I'll go back and I'll add a little more darks to the background, um, uh, well, to the shadow shapes, because um, remember, we're go all our colors will uh, dry about 25% lighter. So even these colors, when they're dry, they'll be a little, a little lighter than they were when, when I put them down. And you can almost see it. It's, you're seeing it right before your eyes. That blow dryer just took about, I don't know, maybe about 10% uh, of the lightness um, or I should say the darkness of that pigment um, and evaporated it. Um, it's almost akin to when we uh, put a cup of coffee on a piece of white paper. At first it looks dark and then in like an hour it gets totally light. Well, it's the same principle. It, uh, it oxidizes up a bit and um, it, gets, it gets lighter. All right, so here adding more, uh, more darks. Um, I really want to get that feeling of light. Uh, this picture was taken when my wife and I w went for a walk down near the causeway at Lloyd, Lloyd Harbor. Um, beautiful walk, little uh, right along the Cold Spring Harbor. Um, it was a beautiful day. Uh, we're adding now some accent lines. I'm really trying to work out the architecture here. Um, this is where we have to be careful um, and take time. Uh, don't rush these, these, these areas. Uh, again, make sure that your areas are dry. Uh, you don't want to proceed with these details with the background being wet or else all the colors we put down will just bleed in. Um, that's a good effect for the background. 
keeps things you know soft but when we want to try to emphasize the focal point which is what we're doing now we want to make sure that uh, we're working dry wet on dry um, okay so I'm just really just adding little highlights you'll see in your photograph that they're a little dark so I'm trying to find where those darks are establishing them um, going around being careful uh, you can see the way I'm holding the brush. I am uh, trying to be uh, precise in, in my architectural rendering of the house. The trees, the rocks, and everything, you'll see that it's a different different approach. Um, it's going to be a little, um, a little broader in, in, in uh, execution. But for the most part, it's uh, finding those big shapes now, which I'm doing here in the shadow. Uh, that's like a back extension to the house. I believe it's the garage. Uh, there is a tree in front. That's that shape that's off to the right-hand side. Um, you'll see what happens to that later on in the painting. We will be painting in reverse on that. Here I'm massing in the, the uh, bushes. Um, very well kept. Um, uh, I used there permanent green. By the way, on the house, I used a mixture of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and cadmium red. I don't think I mentioned that. So um, when you're painting that, you'll see, you can kind of see what the colors will be. I mean, that's brick basically in the, um, in the, sh in the shadow. So it's going to kind of take on a little bit more of a coolness, but yet retain some of the um, some of the warmth of the bricks. I know it's kind of like an oxymoronic statement, but uh, you kind of you can do that with um, you know basically putting a red down and then putting uh, ultramarine blue directly over that. The reason why I like using ultramarine blue is because it's extremely cool. It's probably one of the coolest blues. Um, that's accessible to us. Um, I know lapis lazuli was very cool, but uh, I think that's illegal in this country. But uh, the ultramarine blue will cool everything down, um, will cool the washes down. Now remember too, when we're working in watercolor, um, and I'll probably do like a little demo um, uh, video on that, like how we need to um, create opacity and transparency in our colors um, are very important to the process now here I'm going around I'm painting in so I'm painting in the negative around the tree there just to get some you know what looks like some branches uh, extending over the house um, here more accents you'll see just like any other painting you know, you keep looking and you'll see things. You walk away, get some coffee, come back. You'll see that um, there are things that need to be addressed. So um, with every oil painting, pastel painting, drawing, um, you always have to come back with a fresh eye. It's always good to do that. Okay, so now I am adding some uh, form and I'm trying to get a big area now it might look like I'm doing things piecemeal but in reality I am going I'm linking up with the shadows to create a rock pattern that's in the foreground of this picture I want it to be organic I want it to be uh, precise but yet fluid and loose so it's it's a it's a it's a strange dichotomy you have to kind of um, you know, go quick with your pencil, uh, your, your paint strokes, but try to get a little accuracy um, as you're doing it. Refer to the picture, but do not be a slave to the photo. Um, a lot of what I'm doing here is actually uh, abstracting some of the big shapes, keeping the big shapes that are in the photograph, but also altering them from my, to my aesthetic, okay? Um, if you guys don't like that rock in the middle that looks like a triangle, then don't paint that in. Paint it more of a flat rock or, you know, a squarish rectangular rock. Um, that's up to you. Um, we still, you know, we have to still understand that this is a painting and it's not a aped copy of a photograph. Um, not that that's a bad thing. It 
it's uh, my style just happens to be a little bit more loose and fluid um, these are th this style of painting now here I'm just adding a little bit more um, color um, I'm starting to work up textures to the rocks now just like in any other type of painting uh, we try to work from generals to particulars which just simply means big to small okay um, we're trying to get big shapes uh, we're trying to, to match the values to it with with uh, with each wash that we put down that little swatch I just put down on my um, on the on the shoreline was actually dry brushed in to create some texture and there was also texture dry brushing right in that little patch right next between the large rock formation in the lower right hand corner and the mid ground rock formations um, as you can see if you look at this large you'll see those those uh, those little streaks that's dry brushing that's another reason why I prefer using cold press basically uh, a 140 pound uh, arches paper great paper um, you can use 300 pound um, if you'd like I find to achieve the best results arches is hands down my personal favorite um, there's Fabriano there's uh, other other things too okay so what I did was I, I, I believe I cut the copy um, before or actually stopped the video prematurely um, or my camera just uh, <laughs> overloaded and um, so now I'm going back um, I'm adding some of the detail you'll see that I did do a little bit more on the rocks um, I'm, I apologize for that um, that's basically just adding some of the shadows over those basic shapes um, I have to be careful uh, when I edit these videos um, to stop and watch the camera luckily there wasn't too much that was lost just some of the accents in the rocks okay um, now I'm going back this is basically now the finishing touches we have about uh, uh, maybe about 18 minutes maybe here um, or less I think it's less actually this is uh, okay so I'm adding some trees in here um, we have less than 18 minutes I'm sorry uh, I'm just adding a little bit more of these little details back there uh, the tree shapes so you can see like those you know the the wet into wet effect is really just in giving the impression of, of bare trees in the distance it keeps the air around things you don't have to sit there and draw every little um, twig and, and uh, branch it, that that really is, isn't uh, necessary um, you just want to get the impression here here I'm accenting you see I'll, go, I'll be going back I'll try to work on the strength of that horizontal um, what's nice about this painting is that we have strong diagonals uh, in the rock formations in the foreground and in the midground I'm adding a little darker uh, water reflection um, and uh, you'll see I'll do small things as I go uh, little a little bit more dry brushing in the water just to achieve a little bit of glare and sparkle in the water um, working on that little reflection of that little house <clears throat> drying everything so that I can go back and accent it some more okay um, and I'll probably be going back into some of the foreground I think I don't know what's happening here um, but something is going <laughs> okay here oh here we go so I, that was my bleed proof white that's uh, opaque white um, made by Dr. Martens I believe you can also use pro white which is a very opaque water now this is where I said earlier in the picture that I am going to be using some white um, I had to reestablish where the windows were in the picture 
Um, again, you can reference the photograph and see that, oh boy, I, I totally painted over the windows. Well, now I have a reprise. I can come back in and create the, uh, those little lights. I'm actually adding some accented lights here and there on the windows, on some of the, uh, the outcroppings of the building. I think I will be doing that to the shoreline, and there it is. Um, now, what you can do if you guys don't have the Pro White or the St. Martin's Bleed Proof White, you can easily use, uh, if, you're, if your watercolor sets come with China White, which is a, a popular color, you could definitely use that without a doubt. Um, that, and it's also tintable. Um, I actually added a little bit of Cerulean Blue to the blues in the windows just to give that illusion that, that, that those windows are reflecting the sky even within the shadow areas. <clears throat> All right, I'm adding some lights to the uh, chimneys, which I couldn't do earlier. Um, some people are probably wondering, uh, well, why didn't you just mask the, um, the chimneys? I could have done that, um, but um, I decided I, I'll just go back in and paint them later. But you can, I'm not against masking. If you guys want to use it sparingly, uh, especially in areas that are confined to specific shapes, um, it's, it, it's workable and, and, and doable. Um, I'm not the watercolor police. I feel that any way that makes a picture look good, um, you should use whatever means necessary to achieve that goal. Uh, the one thing I should say, though, is uh, try not to use too much opaque white. You don't want your watercolor turning into a gouache painting, which is simply an opaque watercolor uh, medium. Okay, so back in the tree. I'm adding more detail to the tree. Also working in the negative. Going back and forth is a small jetty out there. I want to try to get it in. You'll also see that um, I use it often. The paper towel comes in into play. Um, that, you know, we, we can't erase and we can't paint over, but we can, as we're working, if we find that uh, a shape that we made is not what we intended, we want to go back and um, just blot it out. That'll lighten it, or uh, in certain cases, depending on how hard you press, can completely uh, eliminate that, that wash. Um, and here I am going back, restating some things um, in the Tudor grid there. Um, okay, I'm adding some more detail. Uh, actually, not detail. I should say more accents in those rocks. I want to kind of give them a little bit more life um, by adding some dark. That dark is pro most likely an ultramarine blue and a burnt umber. That combination is the my go-to black. I do not use black in watercolor. Um, I use various, various shades of that same mixture. If I want a cooler uh, shadow, I add more ultramarine to the, to the burnt umber. And, um, and I find that it works well. Um, it keeps the paintings uh, from getting muddy. Now here we have a good sense of light on the rocks. Um, okay, I am going to be doing some sp uh, spitting <laughs> with my brush. I'm taking the brush. Unfortunately, you don't see it. You could, uh, I'm using, there you go. I'm using my finger to make these little spots. All that is is, some, is rocks. Those, it's just texture. Uh, I'm drying them because I realize I probably should have made a little wash before I did that process. But you can do either one. I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to make a wash right there. And um, you'll see that uh, it kind of gives a little cohesion. Another thing too, what I like to do when I do watercolor, um, I always like to have a little bit of a, uh, a darker um, pattern in the foreground. Um, and the, it was uh, famous with the Brandywine School. Um, of painting and there it is that's the uh, that's the signature and uh, we are going to do the unveiling which I love to do just simply pull the tape off the paper um, that paper I had a ton of blue tape and here's the finished painting um, hope you enjoyed the video 
Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, there will be more videos coming for uh, my class, and this way you'll be able to get the uh, prompts through video, uh, I guess it's through YouTube or email. Either way, I'll be sending the uh, announcements before class. Uh, I'll try to get everything, you know, maybe a day before. This way you guys can get caught up. All right, have a great day. Stay well. Bye now.